Good afternoon again, everyone. Um, first item on the agenda today is um, uh, apologies. I've received apologies from councillors Lally and Lloyd. Um, I don't think anyone else is missing. Um, the second item on the agenda is the appointment of chair for the meeting. Um, have we any nominations for the appointment of chair for this meeting? Okay, is that seconded? Okay, are there any other nominations? Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, is it worth, as we've got some new members, just to do a quick go around the room for benefit of everyone else? So, um, obviously, I'm Councillor Alison Gwynn. I'm from Tameside, and I'm chair of this panel. If we go... Okay. Hello, yeah, I'm Paul Harris. I'm from Governance and Scrutiny at the CA. I'm Justin Lomax, Head of Contract Services. Uh, Michelle Lynch, Lynch, Principal Officer for the Environment Team under Policy and Strategy. Michelle Whitfield, Head of Communications and Behavioural Change at the GMCA. Lindsay Keach, Head of Finance for Waste at the GMCA. Um, Helen Foster Grime, Councillor for Stockport MBC. Uh, Robin Garrido, Councillor Salford City Council. Adele Warren, Councillor Bolton. Uh, Councillor Tom Bestford from Rochdale. Shogun Ali, uh, Councillor from Manchester. Councillor Roy Driver from Stockport Council. Councillor Yasmin Tor from Oldham Council. Councillor Atiku Rahman from Oldham. Councillor Dave Lancaster, Salford. Councillor Alan Quinn from Berry. Councillor Rabna Azak from Manchester. Councillor Susan Emmett from Rochdale. David Taylor, Director from the Waste and Resources Team at GMCA. And I've also very cunningly got you used to using the microphones. You've worked it out, press it on to switch it on when you speak, press it to turn it off when you're not speaking. Yeah. Councillor Quinn. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, I have an, a note from uh, Councillor Foster Grimes that she needs to leave by four as well. So. Item three is the membership for this municipal year of this authority, which is just for your, uh, your noting. Item four is the Members Code of Conduct and Annual Declaration of Interest Forms, which you should have all had circulated. We are having clarifications for those members that are sat on other bodies of the um, combined authority too, so we will uh, get an answer back to you as to whether you need to fill in that for a subsequent time as, as well. Item five is the terms of reference and nomination for the chair of committee. We've done that, but the terms of reference are for noting there are no changes from the terms of reference from last year, so I'll just take those as red, guys, if you just give me a quick nod. Yeah, happy days. Item six is our programme of meetings that have been scheduled for us for the upcoming year. They are all meetings that will commence at 2 p.m. and they will be scheduled within the bounds of, of the city centre for ease for us all. <coughs> Item seven is the appointment of, to the GM Low Carbon Hub Board. We are f asking for a nomination and um, I would nominate Alan Quinn if I have a seconder for that. Okay, was there any other nominations? If not, a quick nod or a show of hands that we're all content with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Alan. Okay, we're moving on to the ordinary business. Of course, Council. Yeah, we just need to um, get a nomination for chair for the municipal year as well. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so um, item five also seeks a nomination for chair for the committee for the full municipal year. Uh, this nomination goes to the CA uh, at its meeting at the end of this month. Um, and again, just seek any nominations from, uh, from, from members. Thank you. Any other nominations? 
Thank you, Councillor. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Let's move on to the part A of meeting our ordinary business. Um, I haven't been notified of any urgent business. No, shaking her head, so that I take that as read. Declarations of interest. Um, has anyone got any declarations of interest any items within this agenda? No? Just checking? No? All happy with that. Fantastic. So, minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of March. Um, I wasn't present, so can someone move those for me? Thank you, Councillor Quinn. Is that everyone satisfied that they're correct and true record that were there? Yes? Fantastic. Thank you very much. So item 11 is a report from David Taylor on the work programme for the next year. This is just a report for noting. It sets out for the meetings through to March 2020, the suggested work programme. It is a live document, so it will be updated and refreshed and brought back to each meeting. So if there are additional items you would like to add, then please uh, notify us. Thank you. Okay, we're all content with that. We're happy to note that. Wonderful. Thank you. So item 12 is register of GMCA key decisions. Yeah, it's just for noting really, as, as I talked about in the briefing earlier, it's just um, picking out those items relating to waste that are listed as a key decision on the forward plan. Okay, if everyone's content with that, no one has anything they want to add to that, we're happy to just note that. Yeah. <coughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Item 13 now is interim services contract update. Thank and you, Justin will take us through that. Thank you. This is a report for noting. It's the, uh, it's the overview of the performance for the interim, the runoff contracts as it was known uh, with Viridor Waste, and an update on key issues, and a mobilisation update for the new lot one and two contracts operated by Suez from the 1st of June. Um, we're looking at verified data to the end of March 2019, which is quarter four of the previous financial year. So there'll be an, an annual figure in there on the 18-19 year and compared with the previous year of 2017-18. Um, looking into section two is a, is a detailed uh, breakdown of the total arisings and the, uh, and the components um, that run into the, uh, into the annual position. You'll see from there that the, uh, the overall uh, total arisings uh, have fallen um, by about 3% overall. So we're now at about 1,000, uh, sorry, 1 million and 90,000 tonnes, uh, a drop there of uh, just, just around 3%. Uh, the recycling rate against that has gone up. So we're over 45% now, 45.38% uh, there. And overall waste to landfill has fallen by nearly a third against that. That has been contributed to by the, uh, the production of refuse-derived fuel going to our, our thermal power station down in Buncombe. Um, alongside that, the figures we normally report at this stage is the contamination levels of curbside recyclers. They are still up in, in the upper, upper teens, are up around 19%. Uh, that is material that's been collected at curbside but was containing materials that were not suitable for the process and therefore loads had to be rejected. Um, loads are therefore about 6% higher than the previous year, which reinforces the message we give about communicating accurate recycling to the residents uh, of, of Greater Manchester, as uh, Norton and Michelle will touch on that later. Um, we have the report on the health and safety uh, for quarter four and the final position for the year. Um, within that, the annual total there, unfortunately, we do have riddles to report. That's, uh, that's the first, the first riddle injury for uh, VWGM for Viridor Waste uh, was in February. Uh, it was the first injury in 12 months, um, an injured party that slipped on uh, some windblown plastic, unfortunately, and, and got a knee injury um, that meant they had to be off work for the time that meant it was reportable under Riddor. Um, and further to that, two more incidents occurred in March. Um, an injured party was struck by uh, a visitor's trailer to a HWRC, a member of staff was walking the the trailer struck them as they moved, um, so they were injured by that. Another, another injury happened in one of the workshops where um, a, an operative was using a grinder and cut their hand. So all in, those, all of those injuries and the previous one we reported to you in December, which was a chain failure on a forklift vehicle, didn't sustain an injury, fortunately. Uh, all of those have been taken and reviewed against the procedures and measures taken to ensure in the future that lessons are learned to, to avoid such injuries and uh, incidents. But the final overall number of incidents has fallen and improved on the previous year. 
Um, section 4 talks about the expiry and mobilization acti activities, the expiry of the previous runoff contract and the mobilization of the new sewers contract. That handover happening on the 31st of May 2019. Um, and there are details on the critical activities that were put in place to ensure a smooth transition from the previous contractor to our new contractor, Suez. Um, that includes site surveys being carried out, um, surveys on, on conditions of um, mobile plants and vehicles, the assets that were moving over, the information and communication technology systems and the equipment transition, the data transfer for staff information and maintenance records, uh, an overall stop take of waste, le of waste levels at all sites that had to be done on the last day after hours to make sure we knew what material was on the ground and being handed from one contract to another. There were the permits, the per environmental permits transfer to operate the sites and then the new signage and issuing of staff PP to change the logos um, across the, uh, the entire contract. So it was a Saturday, it was the 1st of June when Suez took over. Uh, and the WCA deliveries started to commence on the Monday, the 3rd of June. Um, and we are monitoring the Suez mobilization plan to track the deliveries, to, to, like, to track the overall program delivery on a, uh, on a weekly basis. Section 4.2 gives you details on the facility modifications. This was the previous uh, mechanical and biological treatment plants that have been converted into mechanical treatment and reception plants for the new contract. Um, the Cobden Street development works are due for completion on August, uh, in August. Uh, we have had some availability improved by the front end. We've got the ability to, to transfer load materials at the front end, but the back processing kit is being finished and will be complete for August. Redbury is on track to be handed back over on, in November. Um, and further details on both those are in part B of the report. For the, the Invesel composting works, uh, Nash Road and Overhalton um, sites have been converted uh, into bio-waste uh, transfer loading stations, so no more processing for composting in there. The material is bulked up and taken out to off-takers. Uh, that was completed and that work was done under the BW contracts and was completed just at the end of May. Further to that, there will be Lot 1 works carried out by Suez. So they're to take place uh, at Reliance Street uh, in Newton Heath and Chichester Street in Rochdale. Um, the Reliance Street MBT conversion works are due to commence at the beginning of September uh, and will last um, just over 12 months. The Chichester Street conversion there, the rebuilding of the IBC facility that, that uh, burnt down um, will be rebuilt as a bio-waste transfer loading station and those works are due to start in October. Uh, at the 14th of March committee meeting, uh, members requested uh, a fully developed proposal to be for the redevelopment of the, of the, re the Reliance Street Household Waste Recycling Centre. The proposal was put forward there um, and sewers have developed that plan and that will be also accompanying part B of the report. Take any questions on, uh, on those developments? Thank you, Dossie. Any, any questions from anyone? Welcome to it. Councillor Quinn. Thanks, yeah. Um, uh, I think it was 2 4. I mean, we, about the, 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 you mentioned it, Justin, the co mingled um, contamination. I mean, I read, I, I, read a rich, I read a witch report that says the supermarkets are responsible for mislabeling about 42% of their packaging, which will probably come under in the future under e EPR, uh, uh, they've got to get it right. But I think it's a theme, maybe not, well, definitely not, but in the future where we get the communications right, but it's where we go as a, as a, as a committee and as an authority in, in uh, what we do about people who willfully don't recycle. Because there are people who are there, and because if we could get that, that, that contamination down, that would be more money going back into the, you know, into the boroughs and, helping us deal with the things we should be dealing with, like adult social care. So just what point I, w I wish to rain, uh, make, Chair. Uh, just in, in response to that, you, you are correct, is, is that accuracy is obviously has a range of, of elements to it of people willingly um, not, not using the bins correctly and putting wrong materials in, and then also at the other end of people not following the, the guidelines that we give, in particular that we use um, bottles. 
for that. And the, the particular purpose of that at this moment in time is there's such a range of other packaging plastics out there that, that our, our, our facility is, is made around being able to extract plastic bottles and the, and, the, and the materials that they're made of. And that really has to be a strong message in order to get accurate recycling, that the range within the supermarkets not only are so wide and varying in grade that that would contaminate our process, and more to the point, as you say, it appears that in some cases they aren't accurately labelled as well. Um, so at this moment in time, we target specifically plastic bottles uh, and, and only that so that we can ensure that our facility can handle them and separate the streams. Okay, if there's no further questions, we're content to note that report. No, thank you very much. Item 14 is a report on um, an update on the England's Resource and Waste Strategy. Uh, I think Michelle's taking that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the report provides an update of the government's resource and waste strategy and the four recently published consultations. Uh, responses were submitted by the GNCA and um, formed in partnership with district waste officers. Overall, uh, we broadly agree uh, with the proposals set out in the consultations, which supports ambitions to improve resource efficiency and recycling rates. Section three of the report relates to the consultation on collection consistency, um, with a core set of materials suggested for collection, including a separate um, weekly food waste collection and fortnightly residual collection, and also uh, it sought views on standardizing bin colors. Our response outlined that the waste collected should be managed locally to reflect local factors, which include the lack of access to reprocessing facilities and end markets. Um, there's other factors in there as well around housing type um, geography. Uh, whilst we do note that standard bin colors would improve uh, communications and make those easier, um, to do this will put a significant cost burden onto local authorities. Section four of the report outlines the EPR reform, extender producer responsibility. Uh, we do agree with the majority of the proposals and most importantly that producer, producers should bear the full cost of managing packaging waste with one single point of compliance and that funding needs to flow direct to collection and disposal authorities administered by a single organization. Section five of the report covers the deposit return scheme. Um, the introduction of the scheme is not opposed by the GMCA. However, we did recommend that due to the substantial costs um, required in the initial setup of this scheme, that it should be delayed until the other reforms have been established and the impacts on recycling rates um, have been assessed. Section six covers the pl plastic packaging tax, which is broadly supported by the GMCA. We agree that this should be linked to the EPR scheme to ensure consistency. Um, however, we did raise concerns over the 30% recycled content and whether this goes far enough to stimulate end markets for post-consumer materials. We are expecting a second round of consultations, um, whether that be later this year or into 2020. And it's recommended to this committee um, that we delay the development of the GMCA waste and resources strategy until we have a clearer picture on the implications of the proposed government reforms. Thank you. Thank you for that. Is there any questions? Mm. Councillor Flynn. It's, it's not a question. It's, it's at the last meeting, and I know we've got new, new members here today. Who the, 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 it was the advice from members was actually you know, very strong agreeing with you that we, we can't go, you know, four bins enough plastic, and we can't go down the, the road of having, you know, even sort of, you know, six bins, eight bins. So, you know, just to say from our, my point of view, yeah, I support everything we say in this. It's moving the EPR, DRS is all moving forward. It's all, it's all uh, the right way to go. But again, you know, more bins. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people in Greater Manchester are already struggling with four and even if if you had the um what well, i think it, well i don't know it's moving all the time with brexit whatever minister it is uh, michael gold was saying he was very keen on the weekly food collections but even that would um, give us extra costs or could give us extra costs thank you yes i completely agree um moving to eight bins um for majority of households isn't realistic and we've said that in the responses to the consultation 
there's issues um, around, obviously, space. Um, most households can't accommodate eight bins. Um, that's why we've said that it should be down to local authorities to set the collection regime. Um, they know um, factors around housing stock, geographical areas, et cetera. Um, I think there's still a long way to go with these consultations, um, and hopefully we'll get a lot more information out of the second round. Um, as I say, hopefully that will be towards the end of this year. Thank you. So I've got Councillor Foster Grimes and then uh, Councillor Garada. That's it. Sorry. Need new glasses. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, no, I'd just like to comment along the lines, actually, Councillor Quinn has mentioned, it's good to see that um, a lot of the comments that we made um, in the closed session and, and in, in the last meeting have been reflected in the responses on the, on the waste strategy consultation. In particular, um, the fact that eight bins would be most unwelcome for, for many, many households. It would just be practically impossible, aside from the cost, the fact that um, there wouldn't actually be much of an impact in increasing recycling rates, which is what we all want to do, of course, and that's our priority. So I was pleased to see that that was reflected in it. Um, and their thoughts to change the colours of the bins, certainly that would be very unpopular with residents in Stockport who have been leading recyclers across Greater Manchester for many years. Um, but the delay of strategies and um, waste strategies by the government is actually quite unacceptable when we want to make progress uh, in the current climate emergency and recycling is a very important part of that. Um, but I do appreciate also that you have said that, um, you know, quite frankly, we're not sure what's happening at the moment um, and the position with regard to this environmental legislation and the, the legislation which impacts us in Greater Manchester is going to be very chaotic after Brexit, if Brexit happens. So I can appreciate that um, there are going to be delays in further strategies, but I do think it's important that we all, as part of this committee, who are all very committed um, to improving the recycling rates in Greater Manchester for our residents, that we do discuss these issues as we go along. So in, in all, I, I you know, welcome the report. Thank you. Yeah, well, very much along the same lines, uh, in so much as I, I, uh, I'm concerned that we are getting very delays, uh, particularly in terms of the uh, deposit system uh, on the bottles. And I, I'm just wondering how long we expect those delays to be. I mean, obviously, we talk about, you know, waiting for further information and consultation and so on. But it would be, uh, it would be good to have some indication that there is sort of uh, an end date that we're working towards on that. Uh, and then just finally on the number of bins, uh, I mean, in Salford, we have five bins. Uh, and, uh, you know, that really is horrendous. Um, you know, and uh, to go to any more than that would be ludicrous. Uh, and I would actually see, like to see it reduced, whilst at the same time, obviously, keeping up uh, the level of recycling. So just around the time frame, within the first set of consultation documents, what it says is that there will be a second round of consultation. And as Michelle said, the indications are that that will be before the end of the year. Um, I suspect that probably means December. That will then have to be responded to. DEFRA will then sift through those responses and then they will set what their policy position will be. In the original set of uh, documentation, it talks about any changes being transposed into legislation around 2023. So realistically, what we need to do is get through the second round of consultation see what the outputs of that are, and then we can set our Greater Manchester strategy to match the nat national position. So it's realistically into the middle of next year, I suspect, before we can do anything. Okay, thank you for that. If everyone's um, contributed that wishes to, if I can just ask that we agree to the delay of the development of the GMCA waste strategy until there is more clarity on the direction of England's resource and waste strategy, which is the recommendation. Okay, we're all content with that. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. Item 15 is to re receive a report on... It's a communication report. Yeah, I've mis misplaced myself in there. It's the communication and behavioural change update. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, I've got a few slides just to highlight some of the uh, reports. Um, so section 2.2 .2 in the report is about uh, reducing contamination, which is one of our main aims, as I said before. So this year we're focusing on um, delivering uh, blanket campaigns across four of the districts, so Stockport, Trafford, Rochdale and Bury. And those areas have been selected because we didn't work in those areas last year. The focus is on um, uh, the mixed recycling bin, so the bin that's used for glass bottles and jars and plastic bottles and cans. Um, the main problem is that we're still receiving lots of pots, tubs and trays in there and, and not just plastic bottles. So we've developed these campaigns uh, using lots of all of the data we have available, so the waste compositional analysis that's just been completed, um, local knowledge by talking to the local councils, and uh, trackers and surveys, and also research that we've done previously, and um, learnings really from previous campaigns. So all of the campaigns will include um, a leaflet delivered to all households, but not including flats, and a bin sticker or a bin tag onto each bin. And then on top of that, the um, leaflet and the bin sticker will be supported by a range of different communications running across the year. So that will include information on our website, um, regular newsletters from us and through the councils, um, an integrated social media plan and a toolkit for the local council to use on their own channels. We will link in with partners such as housing providers um, and there'll be a range of press releases in local papers, um, articles in local magazines, and features and blogs on the website. And then we'll also run some community engagement with local community groups. Um, and we'll also roll out the e-learning package that was developed last year. We've um, rolled that out to bin crews. And this is um, an online resource that aims to really teach people exactly what can go in each bin. And that's been developed so that all council staff can also do that on their own learning management system. Um, and we're going to roll it out to not just the councils that were um, focusing the contamination campaigns on, but all the nine councils, and then roll it out further into housing providers as well. Um, these are examples of just some of the uh, leaflets and bin stickers and tags that are being developed at the minute. Uh, section 2.3 in the report talks about waste prevention um, and we've been, this is our Recycle for Greater Manchester website, we've done quite a lot of work in the last six months to update this, to um, put a lot more information on there about plastics because that's what we're getting asked a lot about, about how to reduce your plastic use, about single use plastic. Um, there's been a rise in a lot of the plastic free shops across Greater Manchester which is great so we're promoting them through our website. Um, and it's got lists there of repair cafes, um, refill points, um, and how to donate furniture. So we've been doing quite a lot of work to try and signpost people to these places. Um, we've also had a lot more inquiries about plastics as well. So we're developing some information about what happens to your plastics in light of the Hugh Fernley Whit Store War on Waste program, which was on BBC One recently, and also the David Attenborough program that is still very much in the media attention. Um, on top of the contamination campaigns, we're running this campaign called Recycle Beats, which is across Greater Manchester. Um, this campaign is specifically targeted to um, segments one and six. We have um, segmentation information that basically segments all residents in Greater Manchester into six segments, depending on their attitudes and behavior to waste. This piece of research was carried out um, by RAP a couple of years ago, and it's been really useful in helping us to tailor information. So we know that certain people won't read a leaflet. They won't seek out information on the website. So what you have to do in terms of communications is go to where they are. So what this campaign aims to do is to um, promote messages and sponsorship at music festivals over the summer. So we are using social media as well and sponsoring some of the local music festivals across Greater Manchester. We're also doing some um, billboard advertising 
um, and advertising on Facebook and Instagram. Um, these are some of the festivals that we've selected to do uh, some sponsorship, and the sponsorship will be advertising on the main stage um, and also in the programmes. We've tried to pick uh, festivals across all nine districts, but in some districts there just wasn't, there weren't festivals that were suitable. Um, we really wanted to focus on festivals that were actually recycling on site, otherwise it would seem a bit um, pointless as promoting recycling if people actually couldn't, couldn't physically recycle anything while they were there. Um, so the only districts where we're not able to do any um, let me just find out, is Tameside, Salford and Stockport. So if we do find any um, festivals in those areas, we can still do the um, advertising because this campaign runs up until August. So... We can look into it. This is um, specifically designed for the segment of people that attend music festivals. So these are um, where live music is being played. Um, and we're, we're using this sort of advertising to promote the fact that recycling can save energy, which can power um, bands or DJs. So it's really targeting a specific segment of the audience. So we've done quite a lot of research to try and identify those very specific niche music festivals where this type of advertising would work. Thanks, yeah. Have we asked part life because that is roughly 80,000 Saturday and Sunday in June and it's a Manchester festival, but it takes, well, take, it's in Manchester Park, but it's surrounded by Berry. So I think that is a, the biggest one in, in Manchester. Thanks. I'll make a note of that, uh, but my team have done a lot of um, research with the council officers to, to identify um, suitable target audiences. So in, in Bury, we're going to Glastonbury, um, and in Oldham, Cotton Cloud. So we, we tried to be really careful, and there was a couple. So for example, in Stockport, there was a festival, but when we approached the local council, they said they've had noise complaints, so would they asked us to please not... Um, choose that festival to, to sponsor. So we've, we've done, we have done quite a lot of research on this to make sure that we're targeting the right audience and we're being sensitive to the local council's uh, knowledge, their knowledge as well about what advertising would work in what places. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I would suggest there's a, there's a big festival coming up this weekend actually. Uh, uh, Manchester Mela, which uh, attracts lo lots of people from Greater Man Manchester and beyond. Uh, I think we uh, need to look into that as well. Manchester Mela, Maga Mela. S sorry, that takes place in uh, Blackfield Park. Yeah, sorry, J just, just the comment about Stockport. If you could send me the details of that. I'm quite surprised because Stockport Council are very uh, supportive of any kind of recycling initiative. Um, the fact that you're uh, saying that due to noise and disruption suggests these festivals aren't taking place, but we have a huge number. Um, so it, perhaps you could clarify that then, please. It's not, it's not that it's not taking place. It's just that the... Um, festival is taking place but you've had noise complaints from residents so it's a bit of a sensitive um, area and they've asked us not to get involved in that particular festival and not to advertise yeah. did you conclude or yeah that's what I thought you <laughs> can carry on <laughs> thank you um, so moving on to education section 2.5 in your um, paper um, we've been doing quite a lot of work with the education team to update a lot of the resources um, and just after I'd finished writing the report, uh, RAP had um, finally 
uh, given us the information about Recycle Week. So this is not actually in your report, but an addition in that Recycle Week this year is uh, the 23rd to the 29th of September. Um, the theme is um, that we're taking action. So they really want to hear about what's actually happening, what are people doing to increase recycling. So we're going to be running school competition with all the local uh, schools in Greater Manchester and asking them to share their top tips for recycling. So in return, we're going to be delivering some um, resources for the teachers to deliver recycling um, lessons during Recycle Week. Um, we'll develop the usual digital assets, which we'll uh, supply to all of the councils so that you can use that to share on your own channels. Um, and RAP have promised us the social media toolkit by the end of July, so we're hoping to get that toolkit out to all the districts by August. Um, in terms of the education team, we've been updating the resources on our website in line with the new contract, so there's been we have quite a lot of learning resources on there so that teachers can deliver lessons in school. Um, and quite a lot of those refer to technology that is now changing in line with the new contracts. So, for example, the mechanical biological treatment plants. So we've had to work through all of those resources to update them and create new ones. And we're also working to create um, a new, some new resources around the circular economy as well. Um, we are reviewing the... Uh, displays and the assets that we've got in our visitor centres so that we can um, not only improve the displays but also make sure we can improve health and safety in line with Suez. It's something that they're very keen on. Um, oh. And then the final section in the report is around, um, is around Suez in that we've met with them recently to update, to start to put together a communications plan, a joint communications plan um, regarding um, promotion of the HWRC and increasing recycling predominantly, but then we'll also start to work with them to promote reuse in uh, line with developing the reuse shops on the HWRC sites. Thanks, Dr. Michelle. Is, is there any questions? Have we covered everything? Um, well, these are the actual newspapers that we've been advised by the council officers that they prefer. So we did do a review of these. No, absolutely not, no. Um, th the newspaper advertising is all linked in with NewsQuest and um, the Manchester Evening News. So there's no reason why we can't do additional advertising. Is it the Salford Life, then, that you're referring to? Okay. Yeah, we have advertised in there recently. It's just that this... Um, these adverts are um, a different package so that we, we can only get them through the Manchester Evening News and NewsQuest package. There's no reason why we can't put additional ones in there on a regular basis. Um, but it's, this is just part of one separate deal that we do with Manchester Evening News and NewsQuest. So th these are just the newspapers that are owned by them. Okay. I'll look into the Salford Life then. Yes, thank you. Um, well, first of all, I welcome very much the increased use of social media, which I'd raised, uh, I think a few of us may have raised that at the last meeting, and particularly in the report, the, um, the fact that you're using the key influences, which is somebody who's involved in social media, I think that's really very important, on, certainly on Twitter and Facebook, and really welcome the fact that you're using Instagram. A lot of young people, as a mum of three children myself, are using Snapchat. Now, I know that that is a, a forum where it disappears after a few minutes, but I would encourage you to look into that for the future because in terms of influencing young people's behaviour, um, Snapchat is actually really important. Um, my question, I've got a couple of quick questions, if I may. Um, so, on the visitor tour, um, I, I went to the visitor tour as a, a new member of this committee last year, 
and I thought the tour was absolutely fantastic. You had a superb, um, a superb teacher um, that took uh, those of us that went on the tour at Longley Lane, and it was really very interesting. But it was commented by the staff at the time that with regard to the visitor centres and the visitor tours, you know, that schools were welcome and the community groups were welcome, but they weren't being used as often as, as we would have liked. So my question is, have the visitor centre uh, numbers increased in the last 12 months? Um, and if they haven't increased, do you have any plans for that? And I suppose the second part of the question is that particularly with schools, we, we all, I think, probably would agree that we have to change uh, and encourage the um, young people in recycling. And in the schools, you mentioned that, um, that they're going to be taking part in the recycling week. So that is really positive news. Um, but I do speak to a lot of schools who don't know about these resources, even still, uh, strangely enough. Maybe they have other priorities, fighting uh, resources and so on these days. But um, it's just about that, what else we can do to encourage and what support we can give. For example, the new contractor I'd like to see, Suez, giving more support to education and marketing activities in schools. So it's a kind of a general question, and I've got one more short one after that, please, Chair. Um, so to take your first point about the visitor centres, so over the past year we've done, we have done, deliberately taken less tours on so that the two offices could develop some resources to go out and about to schools as well as getting schools to come in. One of the problems, well not problems, one of the things we noticed was that it was a lot of the same schools that were coming to Longley Lane and Bolton and we weren't attracting schools from some areas and there was lots of reasons for that. Um, they can't afford the coaches, which is about £300. Um, they, it was just too far to travel, and maybe they just didn't even know about us. So there's quite a few things for us to address there. Um, we are going to do some promotion, so we, we are going to, now that we've finished the development work, get back into promoting the education centre, but we want to offer a two... two um, types of approaches so if if schools can't get to us we want to go out to them so that those schools that can't afford the coaches or that can't travel we can go out to them as well so we've been trying to develop resources that we can take out as well as so we can take the experience of going around the MRF out to schools as well as them coming to us um, and also in terms of Suez as part of their um, commitment they're developing um, some resources for key stage one um, school children. So yes, we will be working with them very closely to help roll that out across all of the schools. So they're developing some resources on top of the ones that we already um, have on the website. Yes, please, Chair, with you, if you don't mind indulging me. Um, so. Thank you for that. I mean, I do agree outreach is really, really important um, and it is, it is an issue for schools travelling to the centre, but I do think it would be very disappointing to reduce, um, you know, the, the visitor numbers. Maybe, quite frankly, we need more staff there because there is no substitute for, um, for actually having those visits of the community groups and so on um, to that facility. It's a, you know, it's a living experience and it really brings home to you, for example, the issues of contamination and, and how the challenges of, of, of dealing with that. Um, and a lot of those people in those groups, um, community groups that, that would benefit from that, would actually be influences out in the community. So uh, perhaps it's a question that more resources need to be put into that area. And um, the question is, on the contamination project where you're focusing on the four areas, um, how are you measuring the impact of that work um, to reduce the contamination in those areas? It's very difficult <laughs> because there are so many different um, things that it, that it, um, contribute to somebody putting the wrong thing in the wrong bin. So we will measure how many loads are rejected at the MRF, for example. 
but then we'll also do at the end of the campaign some focus groups and surveys both online and by actually going in, into Stockport and into Trafford and asking people if they've seen the materials, have they seen the leaflet, have they changed their behaviour, do they know what goes in the bin. And then also we uh, are still working with RAP to get our tracker. RAP do a national survey uh, which is statistically representative um, and it's carried out at the beginning of the year in January, February and we've just had the results of this year's tracker actually yesterday um, and that tells us the percentage of people that are confused and the percentage of people that uh, put the wrong thing in the wrong bin and it gives us it's like 200 slides of information it's quite in-depth information so we've got a range of different ways that can tell us if things are getting better or not but it is very difficult to measure the cause and effect because there are so many different external factors that, that affects someone's decision to put something in the bin. Is that okay? Okay, thank you for that. If there's no further questions or comments, we shall note that most fine report and move on to item 16, which is a report on Household Waste and Recycling Centre access restriction policy. Thank you, Chair. So this is a two-part report. There's this section under Part A. There's an accompanying report under Part B, which sets out the detailed proposals. Within this report, it's setting out the current measures that we have in place at our household waste recycling centres to deter trade waste. And it also sets out some example schemes which are in operation elsewhere. So I think just to put some context around this, the the, the HWRCs, as the name implies, are there for the deposit of household waste. And the law is very clear that commercial waste has to be paid for, for its disposal. It has to go to appropriately permitted facilities, and that anybody, a trader, depositing that waste has got to be um, a registered waste carrier. They've got to have appropriate duty of care documentation. What we're seeing at the HWRCs, um, if you were to spend any time there, you will see a continual um, flow of particularly vans, um, trailers coming in, which are clearly carrying commercial waste, and that is traders exploiting free disposal, and essentially it's illegal disposal. Around the country, many other local authorities have adopted access control schemes. They may be permit schemes, they may be using automatic number plate recognition, and we're now in the position in Greater Manchester where every single surrounding authority has some form of scheme in place. So what that will be doing is affecting the flow of traffic into our sites and it will be definitely having uh, an impact upon that. So we're now at a point where we need to do something to uh, address this problem. If we don't do anything, then what we will have is an increase in costs. It will affect the ability to actually manage the householders coming through the site, interact with them and effectively increase the amount of recycling that we can get from those sites. So it is an issue that needs to be addressed. We have looked at other alternative options, for example, opening up the sites to actually accept trade waste and charge for it on site. Um, none of these facilities are actually got the appropriate environmental permits in place. And if we were to offer trade waste facilities on them, then you would be taking up capacity and affecting your ability to actually manage the household waste on those sites. I think also within Greater Manchester, GMCA does already offer 11 facilities across the nine districts which have waybridges, which can accept trade waste uh, through those facilities and for it to be charged for appropriately. So I think that's as much as I wanted to say on the, the Part A report. When we get into Part B, there are detailed proposals there that can be discussed. Okay, does anyone have any comments at this point of the report or do you want to? Okay, thank you for that. If not, we uh, note that section of the report. Thank you very much. Item 17 is um, budget out term. So Lindsay's taking us through it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is the um, out term for capital and revenue for 1819. Um, the 1819 revenue budget was 197 million, um, which was being funded uh, 92 million by levy on districts and 105 million contribution from reserves. Um, 
the outturn shows that we managed to draw down 29 million less from reserves, so that's the 29 million underspend. The key factors contributing to that, um, there was a 9 million saving um, in the uh, financing costs, so um, our merger into uh, Greater Manchester Combined Authority um, from being a standalone authority, the Waste Disposal Authority, um, we were able to review the MRP policy. So MRP is paying down your mortgage, so paying down your debt. We reviewed that and we were also able to draw on the wider um, cash flows within the combined authority than we would when we were a smaller authority on our own. So that resulted in a £9 million saving. The remaining savings came from um, low le levels of waste, as um, Justin took you through before, through the contract report. Um, low levels of waste, high levels of diversion from landfill. So that resulted in £7 million saving. We also managed to um, make some money from um, the third party income sharing agreement that we have at Runcorn. Um, in previous years, it's been a lower level than that, but this year it was £2.35 million. So that helped contribute to it as well. Um, at 2.27, you'll see um, so the key decision. This was on the register of key decisions that's going to the CA. Um, at budget setting time, we forecast to rebate two districts of um, 1.9 million. When we ran through all the outturn tonnages, um, the actual outturn is 3 million, so that will be going to the CA at the end of this month uh, for return to the districts. Uh, the capital outturn report, um, you'll see that um, our outturn was lower than what we um, forecast. Um, it's not that any projects have been cancelled, there's just been delays to them, so that spend will be rolled forward into 2019-20. Um, happy to take any questions. Any questions for anyone? Or we were content with that? Happily <laughs> content. Thank you very much. Okay, so item 18 uh, is the point where we exclude press and public from the, the meeting so that we can move on to the confidential part B of this, this meeting. Scratch and fill my water. We have uh, James Dowling.